Hey guys, Master Zeon here. Um, in this Blender video, I'm not so much um, doing a tutorial as much as I am just showing a speed comparison between cycles and my i5 CPU. So my computer is a modest... Oh, let's see, try and get it up. Sorry about that. Here we go. So mine's... Inspirion 620 has only 6 gigs of RAM and is running an i5 at 2.90 gigahertz. Um, so whenever I render on the CPU, the CPU actually does decent. It, it's done decent, but I'd never be able to render an animation with it. It'd just be unfathomable. So, you know, letting this go, you know, 15 seconds and it's on cycle four 25 seconds for 15 samples and in 30 seconds it gets 20 samples and starts to look decent so for my particular PC I have a GeForce GTX 660 um, let's see, 980 CUDA cores, 960, so not as good as the GTX 500 series, but those are actually very pricey. And so this is with the GPU, so it always takes a minute to build the BVH. And in 30 seconds, how many samples are we looking at? One hundred samples in thirty seconds. One hundred samples in thirty seconds. Now that is an improvement. However, the interactive feedback is something that you lack with the GPU. The uh, reason I'm making this video is because when I was waiting for this graphics card, I was upset over the lack of cycles videos that show just how fast it is you know you think you'd see more of those to get more people to want to use blender um so that's what mine is to just show just how fast it does go if you're using a 600 series card so i'd say it's relatively faster however for the setup portion i see that i'd probably use the cpu since it does give me a little more interactivity uh, with the nodes and you can see here it's lagging kind of bad like it's hard for me to even control it but it's rendered fast as hell but I can't control the nodes so I can't just tweak them and all that but yeah it's a pretty nice render actually alright so we'll jump over to the next scene which is this one and first we'll start off with the CPU this is just this robot I've been working on In fact, there's a time lapse of it that's still in process. So, you know, whenever I was watching this render before I got this graphics card, I used to be able to write rhymes about the amount of time it would take. Like, you know, woe is me, here comes cycle number three. And just rhyme all the way up through it. It gives you long enough time to think that's how slow it would render. So, me, of course, I cycles is cool, but... The internal, just at least it was an even playing field for everybody, somewhat. And this one at least requires a GPU. And then on top of that, I get the 600 series card and find out that even though the number is bigger than 500, it's slower. And it's because for some reason they took out CUDA cores um, in the 600 series to make it more optimized for gaming. However, the 500 series, I guess, is probably more suitable for um, crunching numbers. So that was it on the G on the CPU. So we switch over to GPU, and we start to see it start to act a little bit more mortal because 
with the um with all the textures and everything in the scene, it does take a little bit longer for it to go on the GPU, so it's not a super, super substantial difference. But I think within a match of Halo, I could probably render out mm, maybe four frames, but that's better than getting half of one preview frame per 15-minute match, which was what I was getting before. Usually I'd let it... Um, go through like a 2,000 samples and I just do other stuff and sometimes even through four hours of sleep it still wouldn't make it through so it is quite a bit better I mean within a minute I'm looking at a worthy looking quality version of my render instead of waiting and waiting and waiting so I think my workflow now is to try to aim towards being done in one minute at least with a frame and if I get it that way then it might be more manageable all right so you know no benchmark for cycles is complete without let's see Mike Penn's car What are these file names? I should work on a better system. Here we go. So here we are, the BMW. I'll switch it over to CPU. So, people are messaging me. Um, so here we are with the CPU. And I know it's viewport rendering, but if I were to press F12, it'd take forever. And we'll give it about a minute to see how far it gets. All right, and after a minute, I get almost 10 samples. Oh, I get 10. We'll give it that second. All right, so now we switch back over to the CPU. I mean, GPU. And what do we get in a minute? And at a minute, this is what we get. Now, another strange thing about this card is it came with a, what is it called? A Mole to six pin PCIe power adapter. And the computer I have only had SATA. So I had to go and actually buy a SATA to, a SATA to Mole, a power adapter so that way I would be able to hook it up. And at first I thought that it was just going to be a pretty big shortcoming. I've always been kind of nervous about installing graphics cards since they're so humongous and the towers I get are not always 
big enough to accommodate them, but I was able to fit it in. However, it did take two slots and required that I move the wireless card. However, we see here at a minute 35 that I have a decent looking render. However, there is a bunch of noise in the back. That's kind of bad. Um, but I haven't got enough time to really get down and render a lot with the card. I've just been playing with it, but it definitely owns. But there are some things I think with Blender that um, with improvement could make it a little bit better. Like I wish that it didn't choke down the entire computer just to use the GPU, uh, which eliminates me from being able to use it in the background. Um, unlike the processor, which I'm able to just give it certain cores and just leave it. So these are things that are different between the two. And so uh, with that, I leave you guys. Happy Blendering.